Hello everyone and welcome to Alberta based Aquaclim Solutions. We'll present our four part series on the topic environment and floods. This is second of four part series and we'll explore some of the aspects of flood mitigation, preparedness and response. This series will introduce to the subject the objectives of the presentation, causes of floods, components of mitigation. We'll talk about preparedness and response. The subject of flood mitigation covers a broad range of knowledge. The objective of this presentation is to provide basic information on the subject with a view to provoking interest and igniting a passion for solution-oriented thought. According to National Weather Service, floods are a rapid or extreme flow of water onto land that is normally dry, typically caused by rising water levels in existing bodies of water, such as streams or creek, sea or drainage ditches, is referred to as overbank flooding. This type of flooding is characterized by water spilling over its banks. Flash flood, on the other hand, are caused by heavy or excessive rainfall in a short period of time, generally less than six hours, and are usually characterized by raging torrents after heavy rains that rip through riverbeds, urban streets, or mountain canyons, sweeping everything before them. They can occur within minutes or a few hours of excessive rainfall. Now let's consider some important definitions. Flood mitigation involves the management or control of flood water conveyance and storage to minimize potential flood damage costs. Thus, mitigation does not necessarily prevent floods, although that is one of the objectives. Flood prevention and mitigation actions can be considered at three levels, individual properties, small communities or whole town and cities. Mitigation cost is directly proportional to the number of people and property are protected. However, even the smallest mitigation actions have overwhelming effects. According to United States Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, mitigation saves society an average of $4 saved for every dollar spent. Some of the notable recent extreme floods in Canada include the Alberta flood of June 2013, which was the largest flood in Calgary since 1932. Five lives were lost and approximately $6 billion in financial losses and property damage across southern Alberta, Canada. According to the city of Calgary, 80,000 people were evacuated over the course of the flood. Another happening was in 2011 Manitoba floods that caused damage close to $1 billion. About 3,600 people were displaced from their homes due to flooding. Many homes were damaged and hundreds of roads were closed and washed out. Some of the major causes of floods are heavy rains that may trigger due to frontal systems, convection processes, orographic lifting. Snowmelt, especially rapid snowmelt caused by sudden rise in temperature, ice jams, dam failure, coastal storm surges and tsunamis. Factors that enhance floods are land slope, which vary from gentle to steep, lack of vegetation, deforestation, moist soils, like heavy rains on moist soils are likely to lead to more extreme floods compared to dry soils. Lack of flood control infrastructure, climate change due to warmer temperatures have the potential to increase the frequency and magnitude of flood episodes. Flood preparedness and response is the process of understanding the risks of flooding creating plans to prepare for and respond to floods and taking action to minimize the impact of flooding on people, communities and the environment. 
Preparedness includes activities such as creating floodplain management plans, educating the public about flood risks and response and monitoring sources of flooding. Response includes activities such as evacuation, sandbagging and aiding affected communities. Flood forecasting is the process of predicting when and where flooding may occur in an area. This is done by monitoring weather conditions, river flow and other factors that can contribute to flooding. Mitigation, mitigation infrastructure sizing is the process of determining the size and capacity of infrastructure such as levees, dams and drainage systems that can be used to reduce the impact of flooding. This process takes into account the size of the area affected by flooding, the amount of precipitation expected and other factors that can affect flooding. Mitigation and potential climate change adaptation are strategies used to reduce the effects of climate change. Mitigation focuses on reducing the greenhouse gas emissions that cause climate change as well as designing appropriate structures for flood control while adaptation focuses on preparing for and responding to the impacts of climate change. Examples of mitigation and adaptation strategies include improving energy efficiency, developing drought resistant crop varieties and building coastal defenses. Two important components of flood mitigation is the preparedness to manage floods in a manner that minimizes potential damage. Proper and timely response is a necessary aspect critical during flood events. Effective flood preparedness comprises multiple phases, short-term planning and long-term planning. Short-term planning consists of forecasting, alerts and warning. Long-term planning consists of risk analysis, mapping, design and installation of flood control structures. Critical components of flood mitigation and response include Pre-event flood response consisting of timely evacuations and operation of flood control infrastructure when there is imminent danger due to flood damages and post-flood response programs that may require land restoration, afforestation, repair, upgrade and installation of runoff control infrastructure. An important part of flood mitigation entails data monitoring analysis and forecasting. This involves collecting pertinent data and information both meteorological and hydrologic. These data are typically analyzed by computer models that provide flood level and volume simulation that are used to inform the public and multiple stakeholders. Preparedness through design of flood control infrastructure include runoff conveyance systems such as culverts, ditches as well as flood storage facilities such as dams, reservoirs, stormwater ponds, flood barriers, dikes, etc. To determine the right capacities to contain flood waters requires various analysis our rainfall intensity duration, that is IDF analysis, flood frequency analysis, flood modeling, to name a few. Probable maximum precipitation is typically used to compute the corresponding volume of runoff in a watershed in order to determine the size of water control structures, for example, spillways, such as those required in dam projects. This volume can be represented by probable maximum flood, PMF. PMF is the greatest realizable flood assuming complete coincidence of all factors that would produce the heaviest rainfall, PMP, and maximum runoff flood of unknown. Most structures are not designed for PMF, but for greatest floods that may be reasonably expected to local conditions, meteorology, topography, hydrology. The design flood is 
commonly called standard project flood derived from standard project storm. For long term planning and preparedness, it is increasingly becoming important to consider the potential effect of climate change on flood simulations. The atmosphere's capacity to absorb moisture and thus its absolute water vapor content increases with increasing temperature. The saturation value of the air enhanced by about 6% for a temperature increase of 1 degree Celsius creating conditions that have the potential of generating more heavy precipitation. Intensification of heavy precipitation in form of either higher frequency events or increased intensities can substantially enhance the likelihood of flood occurrences. Mitigation for future flood episodes as a result of climate change involve the assessment of several climatic processes that drive the occurrence of floods. Understanding and analyzing these processes help in creating information that is used for designing flood control infrastructure such as drainage and storage system. The key elements in climate change related flood preparedness will require synergies of multiple scientific, social, economic and legal expertise. Collaborative efforts between these multiple expertise together with public consultations will ensure an efficient approach to create metrics to measure vulnerability and provide better climate adaptation and resilience programs. This is the end of series two of four part series. Aquaclim and Valero Solutions thanks everyone who enjoyed this presentation. If you have any questions or clarification, feel free to write to us in the comment below. You can also drop your queries, comments or suggestions on our website as well. You'll find the website link in the description. You stay tuned, we will be coming with our part 3.